Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Axis, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, having watched your video Red Pill Sadness, it struck a chord with me, because I can look back and reflect. For me, MGTOW was a key that I didn't even know I was looking for. Your Red Pill Sadness video also reminded me of the concept of peak experiences, a moment accompanied by a euphoric mental state often achieved by self-actualizing individuals. It's something that you come across outside your comfort zone. It's not easy to experience, but that is what gives it true value. I don't have much of a topic for you, just some anecdotes. I work as an air traffic controller on the west coast and I imagine that I do better than most. I have a preference for avoiding status symbols and because I actually have average looks, this means I am largely inconsequential to women as a romantic partner. This has been a blessing in disguise that has encouraged me to do the things that I enjoy. I have a number of female acquaintances approaching or newly in their 30s, single and holding out for the perfect man. They all bought new condos and celebrated like they just found the fountain of youth and the key to happiness, simultaneously with their condominium. Many of these women continue to hold out for the perfect man, yet many of them settle for the first loser who pledges his eternal love and servitude. I spent the day booking backcountry permits in Utah and never looked back. Cheers. Well, Axis, thanks for your donation. And as you didn't give me a specific topic, I want to talk about MGTOW as an existential crisis. For all those unfamiliar with an existential crisis and what it is, according to Richard James, an existential crisis is a moment in which an individual questions the very foundation of their life, whether their life has any meaning, purpose, or value. And a peak experience often leads to an existential crisis to begin with. If you experience something new and it changes you, then you begin to miss the initial high that you receive from that experience, so oftentimes you seek out another peak experience. Or sometimes you go through an existential crisis by going through something groundbreaking that takes away the simple pleasures that you once enjoyed in life. Taking the red pill leads to a peak moment or experience when everything finally clicks, and you're finally aware of female nature, and it's an experience that fills you with mental pleasure first because you feel your mind reshape and you become a new person. But it's also a painful experience after the initial aha moment and the red pill rage starts to build up and you get very angry. And finally after that you settle down and like a lot of men you get depressed. And that's when men start to question the meaning of life and purpose outside of being a provider protector for a woman. That's when you have to rebuild your value system from scratch and find self-worth yet again. And that's the place where you actually have to walk your own path. That's when you're really going your own way. As a veteran of multiple existential crises, my first I would describe as my fight club hippie stage. I realized that corporations were selling me clothing, cars, and a lifestyle, and if I only bought into it, then I would have been happy. But once I realized that it was all bullshit, I was depressed and needed a new purpose in life outside of consumerism. Believe it or not, I was so depressed that I stopped combing my hair, stopped shaving my face, and stopped caring about my appearance in general because society was telling me to look a certain way for status, and it annoyed me. And I was in my early 20s and decided to start a business and start stacking cash to buy a house, rent out the basement, and pretty much live for free like a hippie with my girlfriend at the time. I quit my corporate TV job, as well as an advertising job, and just built my own web business. I was going to use the evil corporations and companies that were trying to brainwash me, and I repackaged their content for profit, instead of actually letting them control me. My second crisis came when I realized that the world was running out of cheap energy, and in the future where there would be serious social and financial disruptions. This happened to me around 2005 to 2007. Then I saw the price of oil shoot up to $150 and I lost faith in the financial system because it's built on money which are just IOUs. I realized that I actually needed insurance such as gold and silver and land, not just money in the bank. This second crisis destroyed the solutions that I'd come up with to solve my first crisis. So once again I was depressed until I found something new. I found faith in being creative and doing video and photography work. And then my grandmother got sick and I started questioning my mortality, and I even started questioning my relationship and what I wanted to really accomplish in my life. This was back in early 2013, so it led me to question my 10-year relationship and basically leave it. Then the next crisis came after I went my own way and discovered the manosphere. I needed a purpose and needed to do something to fill the value system that I once lost. So I produced a few videos early in November of 2013 and then wanted to stop, but I was friend-zoned so I decided to go full steam ahead because my value system had changed completely. Every existential crisis I face, I actually have to explore the thing that caused me to have that crisis in the first place. Advertising tricked me to be a consumer, so I built an online advertising business to pretty much figure it out. I lost faith in the financial system, so I got a job in the financial services industry. I lost faith in the energy systems around me, so I got into permaculture. 
I lost my faith in women, so I became obsessed with figuring out as much as I could about them. Before all of these crises, I actually had a follow moment with Christianity. When I went my own way from Jesus, I learned as much as I could about religion and how it influences us. So I didn't find fulfillment, purpose, and safety in corporate consumerism, fantasies about the future, money in the bank, religion, or relationships. I came to the conclusions that there's no safe place to hide in life, so you might as well plow forward and try to achieve something different and take some risks. Because just sitting around turtling and protecting yourself doesn't really work. You're going to have to take some risks, and not taking a risk is also a gamble as well. The best things to pursue are the things that you don't understand. Those are the most fulfilling things that you can do. But the moment I understand how something manipulates me, I start to absolutely obsess over it to the point of OCD. Today I find fulfillment in communicating to you guys and genuinely making a difference in people's lives by explaining other people's reality to them. And I'm also pretty much a workaholic getting in 8 to 10 hours a day pretty much every single day. I find happiness at what I do for a living and it doesn't feel like it's work at all. It feels like fun. Axis, I'm glad that you understand peak moments. I'm sure you also understand fully why I went to the Southwest recently and created my traveling videos, Traveling My Own Way, because I was searching out for more peak moments and I found a few unexpected ones. My peak experiences were experienced all alone and not with the people that I met on my trip. And they were unexpected. But my greatest peak experience I can't even talk about because people would think it's absolutely crazy. All I can say is that we're not linear beings in time, and I have personal proof of that. I would say that I have been very blessed to have six or seven peak experiences that followed into existential crises. When I originally watched the Stardust compilation, which I'm putting a link to in the description, that's what awoke me to female nature. I remember listening to it for about an hour and then knowing for a fact that I would basically be a different person on the other end of that five to six hour talk. I've only really heard Stardust talk about his experience with rejecting women as his value system and getting depressed about his own mortality. There you have two different crises that he's faced. I believe he needs to embrace more suffering and learn to thrive at it. To become a complete man, you have to go through setback after setback until you're emotionally mature enough to accept that you will fail and it will depress you. You need to get out of that depressed state as quickly as possible and become passionate about something else as quickly as possible. Axis, I'm glad that you're exploring the world and having your peak moments. But I would separate the fun peak experiences they get with the ones that cause you the existential crisis to begin with. The two are very different. One is about creating a perfect fun moment in time, and the other one is about creating an awakening. As men, when we realize the true nature of women, the crisis we experience is so deep that it shakes us to our very core. It attacks our subconscious purpose, which is to reproduce. We realize that it's not only women tricking us into this, but it's also our biology, too. We deconstruct what attracts us to women, and how they control us, and how we let our biology control us as well. It's depressing because we realize that we spent most of our lives chasing women, instead of chasing more important experiences. I was at the mall today, and I was walking around, and I saw that there were hundreds of women, and only a handful of men, on a weekday afternoon at the mall. That's what's motivating them to be corporate slaves. And the women are the ones enjoying the fruits of their labor in the middle of the day, shopping and enjoying life, making themselves more and more attractive so the guys will work harder and harder. Awakening men to that form of slavery, even if it's only one man at a time, is completely worth it. That's a peak experience that means something more than just a good time. It's an experience that changes the direction of a man's life and alters the course of history because if enough men go their own way, then it causes a ripple effect within the economy and the society. One of those ripple effects, I believe, is going to be the increase in the sugar baby economy. Women will flat out admit to being prostitutes or sugar babies and start working out informal short-term agreements with men. Women are now facing their very own existential crisis. Increasingly, they're realizing that they can't tie down a man with a long-term contract of marriage, so instead they're not opting for shorter-term sugar daddy contracts. As more of them become sugar babies, the price of the sugar baby futures will fall, and they will be cheaper to buy up, so sell more to more sell. The smart women are learning to price themselves properly instead of getting depressed about life. Whereas I think many men suffer from the post-red pill malaise and have a very hard time getting out of it. Yes, you can find fulfillment in life outside of a vagina, but unfortunately many guys can't get over the idea that female validation is going to make them complete. And that's too bad. I look forward to my next existential crisis and I completely wonder what it's going to be. Because at this stage in my life, I don't see as many big realizations ahead of me. For me, deep peak experiences are like taking the red pill. They are bitter and sweet at the same time. They create enlightenment alongside with the existential crisis afterwards. The two go hand in hand. Euphoria and depression at the same time. You were liberated with the new idea, but you lose another part of yourself, cutting you off from something else that you enjoyed in the past. I hope you blissfully enjoyed being with women while you were still younger, much the same way that I did. But now that you don't enjoy that anymore, now you're free to pursue other things that make you happy. And access with regards to those women in their 30s, with condos waiting for the perfect man, I know many women like that. 
Now many of them are in their early 40s and still single, and they now own the perfect cat. For many women, their existential crisis comes when they're no longer pretty enough or young enough to attract any men that they want. Once guys turn them down, that's when they lose their shit. A few guys on my recent video post talking about Tinder said that they enjoy basically getting matched with women and then turning them down and never calling them. They know the woman wants them, but there's a certain satisfaction in turning her down because they know deep down it's going to affect her self-esteem and make herself think less of herself and even, dare I say, possibly humble her. For men, our internal existential crises come from the outside world and how we deal with it. For women, their main crisis comes from how they look and how the world sees them. Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today. Thanks again, Axis, for your donation. And as for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the post-red pill depression away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.